Saw y'all made uh, reward of three players. Yep. Waivers. I mean, what, what, what do you see out of each of those guys? Well, I think we think each one of those guys can help us. You know, so obviously we're we're a little banged up at the tight end position. So adding Devin's going to help us there. Um, we like the tape that we saw, and so we'll add him to the mix. Uh, Max Sherping, you know, has has played a lot in this league and um, really smart guy. You know, so we're excited to add him to the mix as well. And then uh, Jay, we had high regard for Jay coming out of college, coming out of USC. Um, really liked his tape. I think we took Cam Sample right after they took uh, Jay. And so we're very happy uh, with Cam. And, and now you had Jay to the mix as well. I think is a good young developmental player that, that can be there as the fifth D tackle right now. And so um, three guys that, that we think can come in here and help us and develop and um, be what we're about. And so I'm excited to, to see those guys coming in here and work. Obviously, three, three in, there's going to be corresponding moves. Have you guys figured those out yet? Or do yeah. you guys know, or is that still a work in progress? I'll say it's a work in progress at the moment, yeah. You, from a practice standpoint, are you expecting everyone that's been able to practice to practice or are you getting anybody back? Um, where are you at from a standpoint of practice? <laughs> Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, it, it all happens really fast right now. So, um, you know, you're, you're hopeful to get as many practice squad guys back as, as you wanted. I, I don't know what that number is at the moment. I know Kenrick's going down there to Jacksonville. Um, I just got done yelling at my brother. Um, and then, you know, there's there's uh, a couple other guys that, that maybe have some decisions to make. So uh, we feel like we get a good group that we're going to add to the practice squad and we're hopeful to get most of them back. Preston, you want to yeah, nah, nothing. Mm-hmm. He's a good, he's a good young player. I'm excited for him. Outside of uh, Evans' game-winning kicks, is there a specific kick he made last year? I put you on the spot that really stood out to you that you maybe thought, like, I can't believe he, he made that kick. I think, you know, probably one that gets lost in the shovel is the one in Denver um, because it was such a tight game. We knew that every single point was going to matter. So for him to whatever the yardage was, you know, 55 plus, that was a big deal. You know, going into the half, a lot of, a lot of times, you know, I think some people look at into half kicks just as, as throw, you know, not for us, coaches or players, but as um, you forget how – pivotal that moment is it gives you a little bit of momentum when really you just had whatever we had one or two plays before that and all of a sudden you steal three points right before the half with a monster kick like he had um, that's probably not one of the ones that people talk about as much because he hit so many game winning kicks for us down the stretch and early in the year that one gets lost in the shovel but that was that was a big one a two-part question here Starting left guard, are you, are you ready to name a starting left guard? Yeah, we'll move forward with Cordell Volson. You know, I think um, all the things I've said about him remain true, and so we've made that decision. We'll move forward with it. So my follow-up is about Sharp and Tier. Depth, experience. Mm-hmm. What do you see his role being? I think that's that's well put. You know, it's he's an experienced guy that um, you know F- Frank and, and Derek Frazier have some familiarity with from the pre-draft process. Um, you know, so we felt good enough to submit the claim, and we're happy that he's in the mix. Why was it so important to add a, a guard with some experience? Well, I, I don't know that we were actively looking just to add a player, just to add a player. You know, we want to make sure that it's the right person. And that's why we put in one claim for one offensive lineman, it was Max. And so uh, to get him, you know, we're excited to add him to the mix and see what he's about. Is he just a guard or is he like a tackle? He's got some flexibility. He's, he's played more guard there. Um, but he has some flexibility, like you mentioned. Which, would he end up now being the top backup guard? You know, it's very young in the process. So um, I'm not, I won't get into where he falls in the depth chart, but we're just happy to get him in the mix and get to know him a little bit better and see, see how he fits in as a player for us. Going back to the tight end position, are you guys done there, or do you feel like, do you feel like you're set at that spot? We'll see. You know, we're, we're happy with Devin. Um, you know, we, we liked him a couple of days ago when we started watching him. We, obviously, we know him from the pre-draft process. James had gotten to know him and, and really our scouts studied him a lot. So we've, we've revisited him the last couple of days and excited how it felt for us to get him back in the mix. Um, we think that he can do some things to help us right now as, as we stand. So you don't, by the end of the day, you don't expect any more transactions? I don't expect any more transactions at the end of the day. No. Trumping, uh, in the study that you guys did, is he sharp mentally? Is he a quick study? Is he a guy that can kind of grasp your offense very quickly? Yes. You know, that's that's one of the very positive traits about him. Smart guy. Um, so I think he'll fit in well that way.
But Devin, is he, you know, you have two different styles of tight ends. Is he more, you know, the, the blocking inline guy? What do you see from him? You know, there, there's some good routes he's puts on tape, so I'm not just going to pigeonhole him as a, as a wide tight end, a blocking tight end, but I do think he's a big guy. You know, he's, he's I'm not going to guess what his weight is, but it's up there. You know, he's one of the bigger, bigger tight ends. And um, so there, there's a presence that he can bring there in the run game and in protections. And, and at the same time, you know, there's, there's some good enough stuff on as a route runner on tape that, that lets you know that he can do that as well. Is, that, is he somebody you were aware of out of UCLA? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we, we talk about all those guys, you know, but there's thousands of names that come across my desk and, and then you got to refocus. OK, yeah, we talked about him, you know, two years ago or whenever it was and things come back to you. Um, we haven't played New England, obviously, so that wouldn't have come up on our radar. Uh, but but again, James Casey probably watches more tight end tape than any person on planet Earth. So he's aware of all these guys at all times. And uh, this was a guy that he he certainly felt good about. Our scouts felt good about. We watched him the last couple of days and and felt good about submitting the claim on him. Consistent growth. I think he, he improves every day. Um, he takes the teachings and, and really fights to work on it each day. And so, again, there, there's, there's a consistency there that we know what we're getting. Zach, a lot of times as a head coach, you have to kind of temper emotions, I understand, in a game. But Joe and, and Jamar, last year, week one, that play at the end of the first half and how it hit. Is there a, a moment where you feel like, OK, this is going to work, and you're, you're more excited than maybe you might show in that moment? Um, I knew it was going to work before that play. I promise you that. Um, yeah, there, there, there's there, there's key moments in games when you you can feel the momentum turn that maybe you don't show outwardly that you feel like okay that was critical for us. Um, was that moment one of them? You know, we we had a lot early in the season where we hit some two minute drives and and expanded our lead a little bit. You know, the Minnesota game being one, the Pittsburgh game being one. Um, yeah, I don't know if I specifically answer your question, but it, it can happen. Well, it's such an emotion swinger, as you said, in those kind of moments. I mean, how much can that change a franchise, those have to have it kind of moments that Joe and Jamar have together that really can change a game in a season? They're just two great players. You know, so it's not not necessarily about a moment. It's more about what they bring to our locker room, what they bring to our city, um, our organization. You know, those are two two guys that are uh, two of the best at their position and, and will be for a long period of time. And so um, it doesn't always play out that way when you take top five picks. But for these two guys, I, th I think we're pretty certain that um, we hit on what we thought we would get. And um, th that's because that's because their work ethic almost sur surpasses their talent level, you know, and not every talented player has that in them. And these two guys, I think, uh, work as hard as any two people at their positions in the NFL. I feel pretty confident saying that without knowing all the other players, that these two guys put in all the necessary work to be great. And, and that's why it's no surprise to me that they've had the impact they've had on our, on our team. Obviously, you Quarterback is very good at throwing the ball down the field, but my issue is we're good at catching those types of passes. But in addition to that, why or how difficult is it to create an explosive as offense as explosive as you guys have? And aside from the talent, what goes into kind of making that happen? You certainly want to put guys in the right position. You know, you, you call plenty of plays that you intend to be explosive that that pre-snap the coverage takes it away and, and the quarterback knows he's going to check it down pretty quickly. So um, there's a lot of things that never come to fruition that we're, our point is to try to be explosive. Uh, but I think, you know, the players bring the scheme to life. Um, sometimes they make bad plays into good plays. And they, they are some of the more exciting plays that we experience when in reality the play may be busted, it wasn't a great look, um, and they just make it happen. And so the explosiveness, again, credit to our coaching staff. We, we work like crazy to put our guys in the best position to um, take full advantage of their talents. But, again, we have really talented players that, that make that a lot easier at times. And, and sometimes, again, they go off script when a play doesn't work and they make it happen, and there's plenty of explosives that happen that way. And you look around the league, um, as we did the two years before we had all these guys, and we saw that going on with a lot of great players and great quarterbacks and great receivers of just going off script and making plays, especially in the red zone, the scramble drills. And and uh, now we, we get to be a part of that, and that's that's certainly helpful to what, the entirety of our team. Sorry, Zach. Uh, what is the risk-reward when you're assimilating three players 
after you've gone through a training camp, the full preseason, at this stage to make sure that they're ready and they're going to be productive players in your system. VJ Hill worked out great last year, right. but you know, that's not always a certainty. Yeah, you, you try to find a role or a developmental role for them initially. We're, we're not asking these three guys to come in here and start for us week one against Pittsburgh. We're asking uh, them to potentially play a role or even be an active, you know, and develop over time because um, we've, we've liked the player in the past. And so I think those three guys will, will fit what we want to be about. Um, I won't make any projections on what's going to happen the first week or two with them. We have to wait and see once we get our hands on them and see how quickly they can assimilate into our group and our offense and our defense. But we're adding all three for a reason because they think they can help our team in some way, shape, or form at some point in the season. And so we'll just see how quickly that can happen. Coach, when you were sifting, when you were sifting through the names last night, a lot of names. I mean, a lot of names. I mean, you're picking 34. Yeah. You get a third rounder, you get a fourth rounder, fairly of recent vintage. I and mean, I that. Wondering what you thought your odds were when you were looking at that stuff last night. Well, yeah, we, we liked these three players. And so when you like players, you, you don't think at 31 you're going to get them. And it just so happened that we did. And so um, we're happy because we see fits for these guys and, and maybe other teams didn't. Um, the way they're structured, the way their depth was, for us, these three hit positions that we, we felt like we could help ourselves. We only carried 40 tackles. That was pretty rare for us. And so now we found our 50 tackle. Um, we're always looking to help our offensive line out, you know, and turn it over every rock to make that happen. Max Sharping becomes available. He's a guy we liked. Um, so we add him to the mix. And then um, Devin, obviously, we, we have the issues right now with the injury front that we have at tight end. We think some guys are going to get healthy and they'll be able to help us, but he also is able to add to the mix and, and we think that he's a good football player and will be able to help us. What would you like to see out of Jackson Carmen over these next few months? Just continued improvement. You know, I, I think Jackson has come a long way since last year even. And you know, we just added another player to the mix that has also shown great improvement over a short period of time. And so um, this isn't this isn't even a setback in some ways. It gives Jackson a chance to continue to learn and grow and um, keep improving every single day, like Frank asked him to. And uh, I like Jackson. I like what he's about. I think he has a very bright future here. Um, right now, he's just our backup guard. Assuming because you didn't put him on IR, you expect Isaiah Prince to be back? Soon. We'll see. You know, some of those injury guys, we're going to have to sort through, you know, how quickly they can return. And, and some guys may be longer than others. Zach, does this feel like a long wait to get to that first game? And how important is it to pace these guys so that they're peaking on the 11th? Yeah, there, there's fun little things that crop up along the way that, that take your time, you know, like, like days like today. Um, so it gives you plenty to focus on. I think it's a good week for our guys. You know, we get a chance to hit a lot of things that maybe we installed early in training camp that we want to revisit before we get into a game week that, that may or may not be a part of the plan next week. Um, so th this is, these two days are really an opportunity to, to get our players back on the field, you know, work on the conditioning a little bit revisit some things that we think are going to be helpful for us over the course of the season. And and then we give the players that three-day break that they get, and then they come back on Monday for that bonus day. I know you're not quite on the Pittsburgh yet, but they obviously have a good defensive line. What does it mean to have a, a guard as experienced and talented as Alex Kepp is? Yeah, they're very helpful. He's... Um, He's played at a high level. He's played next to guys who play at a high level. He's been on teams that play at a high level. He's been in these games. He's, he's seen these matchups before. Um, so it's I've been really pleased with how he has played in training camp, and um, especially coming off that injury he did. I, I think he's he's recovered quickly and nicely and been what we hoped he would be. Flip side of that, I mean, you've started a lot of rookies in week one at skill position, but a guy like Cordell, what's What's the biggest challenge for, for a rookie to be thrust into that starting role right off the bat? Yeah, he's a physical player, and that's that's a, a very good quality for him to have going into week one against Pittsburgh, you know, because um, Cam Hayward's one of the best in the business. Larry and Joby's one of the best in the business. Tyson Allo has done it at a high level for a really long time, and so um, – their D line is one of the best in all of football, and uh, we know about their edge guys. But their interior guys probably don't get the credit that they all deserve. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. We we give them a lot of credit, and so um, it's a dogfight in the trenches when you play the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so um, we feel like Cordell will be ready for that. You know, alongside some some veterans that have done it for a while, and Jonah and Ted. And uh, so I'm excited to see how that all plays out. Good. Thank you. Thank you.